Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Inside. Today we're looking at a Dream Blade collectible miniatures game. This is the starter set and it's an all new game design it says. Aimed at ages 13 and up for two players. This is the starter box. Um, I believe there's supposed to be enough for two people to play. The box is pretty beat up. It's been in storage for a long time. I just kind of dug it out. I'm not going to lie, I found it in the storage unit. Uh, the back of the box is busted up, but it shouldn't affect anything inside. Let's see what it says on the back here. This starter contains everything a player needs to get started. 16 randomized pre-painted plastic miniatures. Each miniature has its own base with the stats on it. Uh, we got a double-sided full-color dreamscape map, nine six-sided dice, and a rule book. Uh, you can get booster packs. There's 96 miniatures in the set. So this is put out by Wizards of the Coast. They know how to market pretty well. This game never seemed to catch on in my area. I'm not sure about other people. I know they had uh, one expansion boosters other than the starter ones. So there's the starters, the starter boosters, and then another, at least one more booster series. But it never really seemed to catch on in my area. I don't know if it just was because it wasn't supported real well or what the reasoning. But let's see what's inside here. Let's look at the box a little bit first. Um, like I said, I, it got beat up in storage. So probably should have just played the game at some point. Uh, I did have a couple of these starters. And I know I opened one, but never really got to play it too much. I don't remember anything about it beyond that. So, uh, it's really comes apart poorly. Alright, let's see here. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of guys in here. Alright, so let's get the box out of the way. We've stared at that. That's not what we're here for. Alright, there's our dice. They're very specific dice for the game. Uh, basically, these are um, just a uh, one, two, three dice with a couple of symbols on them. Because there's a, like a, there's a one, two, three, and then this sort of symbol here. I don't think you can see that very well on the camera. And then a little diamond on each end. One's a hollow diamond, and one is a full diamond. And you've got one regular six sided dice. They're pretty nice quality dice, though. Wizards of the Coast doesn't usually make garbage. And then let's see what we got here. We got our. Here's our map. It's held up pretty well over time, it looks like, unless I rip it here. All right, it's really big, and it's got it's sort of like a chessboard kind of layout with different numbers on the squares. We've got twos and different colored numbers, and on the back is uh, some a different thing with the turn sequence and the scoring this looks like this is the beginner side and the other side is the advanced side yeah use this side of the map for your first game so it's got instructions on what's going on on here in different color for each player i assume so yeah so there's our map um you'll want to put something big and heavy and plastic, clear plastic over that so it doesn't get destroyed. Then what do we've got here? We've got a checklist of all the minis in the set. It's just a little advertising thing. That's kind of cool. We've got a reply card. Then we've got our rule book. And the rule book is pretty nice quality actually. It's got a table of contents, color images, explanation of the the uh, stands and what the dice do how to read the map uh, basic uh, information on how to play I mean it's it's a rule book so yep got a little glossary in the back pretty cool so that's the rule book Let's see what our miniatures are here I'm going to just go ahead and open these. I'm going to use the scissors. Don't use scissors without per, uh, the permission of a responsible adult. And I'm making everybody else's sealed figures more valuable because I'm opening these. So let's see, we've got a 
Treacherous Concubine. Well, that's not nice. Uh, that's a hell breed. On the bottom of the mini is a little bit of information about it. And then there's stats on top. So, yeah. So there's our concubine. Or treacherous concubine, I should say. The minis are pretty nice. They're a little nicer than Mage Knight figures, if you ever saw those. Um, pretty decent gaming minis. Uh, here we've got a unique Hell's Fury. Uh, let's see, it's... It's got the rarities on the bottom. This one's diamonds. I believe that's an uncommon. And this is a star. So that's a rare. And that's a pretty cool looking miniature. Uh, you get a lot of minis in these starters. Uh, the starters are pretty hard to find. And they usually seem to run about 30 bucks these days. Uh, as of this recording in 2016, um, I had this in storage, so I didn't have to pay for it. Uh, there's a common, and this is a Blade Hound Blood Cut. Hopefully, you can see those okay. Next, we have a Faceless Stalker. This is another common. paint jobs are really nice on these. I'm actually really impressed by that. Uh, unlike earlier figures like from Mage Knight, the pre-painted minis came a long way by the time this came out. Uh, we've got a reinforced uh, Eagle Feather Warrior. This is another common. It's number 3 of 96. Uh, the glue holding these figures on the plastic is still in pretty good shape despite the passage of time. Uh, which is actually really impressive, because uh, it could easily come apart, I think. And if it hadn't been put out by Wizards, it probably would have fallen apart by now. Uh, Wizards did a real good job with a lot of the minis they put out early on. Um, these days, they don't seem to do too much miniature stuff. Uh, I think since Hasbro took them over, a lot of the quality's kind of gone out of it. Here's a Bone Blade Serpent. Although they did put out that cool uh, uh, Arena of the Planeswalker board game, which uh, I was real impressed with, but they just really didn't support it too well. Which was disappointing, because uh, I thought, I'm not a big Magic the Gathering player, but that was a board game based on it. It was kind of cool. Here we have a Hawkeye Instigator, an Uncommon, from the Blue group. Next we have a purple Skeever Hatchling Common. Alright, now we have a Inscribed Axe Beast. Ooh, he's pretty cool. Uh, he's an Uncommon. Uh, each player would need a starter set from the look of it, um, which is a little disappointing because these are pretty hard to track down. You can find the individual figures, so if you can find a rule book, you could probably play without having to buy a starter, but you'd probably need a map. Uh, but I'm sure somebody's selling theirs online. Uh, we have a Knight of Autumn Gate. He's a common. He's got like a pumpkin head kind of thing going. He's part of the green faction, I believe. I think those are different factions. Then we've got a green base hive pincer. He's another common. So we've only got one unique so far, which, you know, is a little disappointing, but you can't have a box full of uniques. That'd be weird. And probably somebody would have been fired for that. Now we've got a Dream Stuff Entity, that's a common, the gray base.
Next, I got a... What is this thing? A Cannibal Pariah. It's a common. That one's a... Looks like the Tiki from that Brady Bunch episode back in the 70s. Let's do this again next. We got three left here. Thankfully, this looks like a pretty good assortment of guys. You could get kind of hosed if you got one of these starters and it didn't have a good assortment in it because that's always a possibility with a box full of random minis. We've got a Jack of Blades common. Pretty tough looking. Next we've got the sound of me cutting open another bag. Followed by a blind spike mauler. This is another common purple. And lastly, we got something that's got some cardboard around it. That's another thing I liked about Wizards um, when they did minis that were a little more fragile. They put little cardboard things around them to give them a little extra layer of protection. Sometimes it's a pain to get them off because they have tape on them, but they worked really well in the Star Wars minis. Um, those were some of those were fairly easily broken if they hadn't but had cardboard around them. All right, this is a Spellbound Scissors common, and it's just a little pair of scissors. So that's our 19th mini. Uh, the rule book is real nice quality, good paper. Um, the figures are real nice quality, good sculpts. Um, most of them look pretty cool, uh, especially our unique here. He looks really cool, I think. So uh, we did get one rare and a bunch of commons and some uncommons, of course. And you do get the map and the unique dice, which you will probably need. You could probably find some substitute dice that you could just kind of use a marker on to label. Um, as long as everybody's in agreement, I don't think that'd be a big problem because it's just a one through three and the other sides are special. So you could label four, like a diamond, five, a diamond and six, the weird, uh, dream symbol thing. So you could probably work around that if you can't find the dice, but you will probably need the map, at least for your first game and, um, a rule book for sure. So, uh, that's what's inside the Dream Blade starter set for the collectible miniatures game from Wizards of the Coast. Like I said, the starter boxes are getting harder to find. Um, the game never really seemed to take off from what I've seen, at least in my region. Uh, but the miniatures are out there. They are pretty cool miniatures, actually. And would probably make pretty good uh, miniatures for um, like a role-playing game or something like that. So that's always something to think about, too. But I, I recommend the at least trying it out. It looks like a pretty cool game. And the miniatures are really good quality. I'm real impressed with that. So that'll do it for this episode. As always, thank you for watching. Um, that's what's inside the box. So we'll see you next time on What's Inside.